whispers in the shadows. The dilapidated mansion at the edge of town stood as a dark silhouette against the pale moonlight. The locals spoke of its haunting history, the Mercer House, a place abandoned four decades after a series of unexplainable tragedies. I, driven by a morbid curiosity, decided to spend a night within its decaying walls, unaware of the malevolent force that awaited me. As I stepped through the creaking doorway, the air inside seemed to shift, as if the house itself was alive and watching. The floorboards groaned beneath my weight, and a cold draft swept through the grand entrance hall. Moonlight filtered through dusty windows, casting eerie shapes on the walls. I set up my meagre belongings, in what might have once been an opulent parlour, the faded wallpaper bearing witness to a bygone era. As the night deepened, the silence was shattered by a soft whisper that seemed to emanate from the very walls of the house. Leave, it urged, a spectral voice barely audible, ignoring the anise crawling up my spine. I dismissed it as a figment of my imagination, a product of the stories woven by the townsfolk. As the clock struck midnight, the atmosphere in the house grew oppressive, shadows danced in the corners. Taking on unnatural shapes that seemed to watch my every move, footsteps echoed through the empty halls, yet I was the only living soul within those cursed walls. I ventured into the dimly lit corridors, guided by an unseen force that pulled me deeper into the heart of the mansion. The air grew colder, and the whispers intensified, now forming chilling phrases that echoed through the empty spaces. Get out while you still can, the voices pleaded, their desperation sending shivers down my spine. But I pressed on, drawn to a room at the end of a long, winding hallway, the door swung open with a haunting creak, revealing a chamber bathed in an otherworldly glow. A flickering candle on an antique dresser cast dancing shadows on the walls, and an ornate mirror reflected the room in a distorted manner. As I gazed into the mirror, my reflection seemed to waver, its features contorting into a grotesque mask of anguish. A guttural moan filled the room, and the temperature plummeted. I stumbled backward, but the door slammed shut, trapping me within the spectral chamber. The whispers grew into agonised wails, each cry a testament to the suffering that had befallen the Mercer house. Faces appeared in the mirror pale, tormented souls from a bygone era, their hollow eyes bore into mine, pleading for release from the cursed existence that bound them to the mansion. In a desperate attempt to escape, I clawed at the door, the cries of the trapped spirits reverberating in my ears. The air thickened with an otherworldly energy, and the room seemed to warp, the walls closing in around me. Just as I felt the grip of despair tightening, the door relented. I stumbled into the hallway, gasping for breath. The once silent whispers had transformed into anguished screams, and the very foundation of the house seemed to quake with the weight of its haunted history. With each step, the mansion fought against my retreat, shadows clung to my every movement, and the air grew heavy with a palpable malevolence. As I crossed the threshold, the front door slammed shut behind me, the echoes of the tortured souls trapped within reverberating through the night. I stumbled into the moonlit courtyard, my heart racing as I put distance between myself and the Mercer house. The whispers lingered in the night, a haunting melody that would forever haunt my dreams. The Mercer house, with its twisted history and tormented spirits, stood as a stark reminder that some places are best left undisturbed. As I looked back one last time, the mansion loomed in the darkness, a silent sentinel guarding its haunted secrets. 
Spectral Shadows The old Victorian mansion loomed in the moonlit night. Its grandeur was shrouded by decades of neglect. They called it the Hawthorne House, a place where the whispers of the past echoed in every creaking floorboard and drafty corridor. It stood at the edge of town like a sentinel of the macabre, and I, against better judgment, had decided to spend the night within its haunted walls. As I stepped through the rusting gates, a chill seized the air, and the overgrown garden seemed to recoil in the face of the looming mansion. The front door groaned open with a push, revealing a grand foyer where dust motes danced in the moonbeams that filtered through the cracked windows. A distant howl of wind echoed the mournful cry of souls long departed. I ascended the grand staircase, the wood protesting beneath my weight, the air grew thick with the scent of mildew, and a soft whispering sound accompanied my every step. I reached the hallway, lined with faded portraits of stern-faced individuals whose eyes seemed to follow my every move. The room I chose for the night was adorned with antique furniture, draped in moth-eaten sheets. A single candle cast long shadows on the walls, flickering in the oppressive silence I settled in, convincing myself that the stories of the Hawthorne House were nothing more than the product of superstitious townsfolk. As the clock struck midnight, a hushed symphony of whispers filled the room, the temperature plummeted, and an unseen presence seemed to brush against my skin. I shivered, pulling the covers tighter, but the whispers persisted, unintelligible words that slithered through the air like spectral serpents. A soft glow emanated from the corner of the room, revealing the figure of a woman, her eyes were hollow sockets, and her tattered gown trailed behind her like a ghostly shroud. She drifted toward me, her spectral form exuding a palpable sorrow, panic clawed at my chest as she reached out, her icy fingers brushing against my cheek. The whispers coalesced into a haunting melody, a lamentation that echoed through the haunted halls of the Hawthorne House. The woman's voice intertwined with the ethereal chorus, recounting a tragic tale of love and betrayal that had condemned her to an eternity of restless wandering. I tried to escape the room, but an unseen force held me in place. The walls seemed to close in, and the air grew thick with the weight of the past. The woman's visage contorted, her mournful expression turning into one of anguish. The room transformed into a sepulchre of despair, a spectral stage for the tragic tale that unfolded before me. The ghostly figures of lovers danced in the moonlit room, their movements synchronised to the haunting melody. The air pulsed with a spectral energy, and the boundaries between the living and the dead blurred into a surreal dance of shadows. I was an unwilling spectator to a tragedy that transcended the confines of time. As the spectral dance reached its crescendo, the room plunged into darkness, the whispers faded, leaving behind an oppressive silence. I found myself alone in the haunted mansion, the echoes of the spectral performance lingering in the air. With a newfound resolve, I fled the Hawthorne house, its grandeur now tainted by the lingering spirits of the past. The once majestic mansion stood as a monument to the tragedy that had unfolded within its walls. The spectral shadows and mournful whispers of the Hawthorne house would forever haunt my dreams, a reminder that some tales were best left undisturbed in the realms of the supernatural. Whispers in the Shadows The house stood atop the hill like a brooding sentinel, its dark windows peering out into the night like vacant eyes. It was a relic from a bygone era, shrouded in an aura of unsettling stillness. The for-sale sign in the overgrown front yard seemed to mock those who dared to consider this decaying mansion as a potential home. Little did I know, the horrors that awaited within those walls. 
The first night in my new abode was restless. Creaks and groans echoed through the empty halls, as if the house itself was alive with a malevolent energy. The air was heavy, and an unrelenting chill settled in every room regardless of the feeble attempts to warm it with the flickering fireplace. As the clock struck midnight, I heard the first whispers. Soft and haunting, they seemed to emanate from the very walls of the house. At first, I dismissed them as the echoes of my imagination, a consequence of the old timbers contracting and expanding in the night. But the whispers persisted, growing louder, more distinct. Curiosity mingled with fear as I followed the ethereal voices through the labyrinthine corridors. The whispers seemed to beckon me toward the heart of the mansion. The wallpaper peeled away to reveal layers of forgotten memories, and the floorboards groaned beneath my hesitant footsteps. Entering a dimly lit room, I was greeted by a flickering candle on an antique table. The shadows danced on the walls casting eerie silhouettes of the furniture that seemed frozen in time. In the centre of the room, a dusty Ouija board rested, its planquette motionless. Compelled by an unseen force, I placed my hands on the planquette. The whispers intensified, forming words that cut through the silence like ghostly knives. A name emerged an entity from the beyond seeking acknowledgement. The planquette moved with a will of its own, spelling out a tale of tragedy and betrayal that had stained the very foundation of the house. As the last letter was spelled, the room plunged into darkness. The candle extinguished, leaving me in the suffocating blackness. Whispers transformed into guttural moans, and I could feel a presence closing in around me. Panic set in as unseen hands brushed against my skin, cold and insistent. Fumbling for a source of light, I stumbled into the hallway, only to be greeted by a ghostly apparition. A woman in a tattered gown stood before me, her eyes hollow and filled with sorrow. She reached out as if seeking solace, her incorporeal form flickering in and out of existence. The house seemed to come alive with echoes of the past, a symphony of anguished wails and distant footsteps. I realised that the spirits trapped within those walls sought release, their tortured souls bound to the decaying mansion by a dark and unresolved history. In a desperate bid to escape the haunting, I raced through the haunted halls, the whispers becoming a cacophony of torment. The house seemed to shift and contort, its walls closing in around me like a vengeful entity. The air grew dense with a suffocating malevolence, and the temperature plummeted to an unbearable degree. Finally, I burst through the front door, gasping for breath as the cold night air filled my lungs. The haunted house loomed behind me, silent and foreboding. As I looked back, I could see the flicker of candlelight through the windows, the whispers lingering in the shadows. I stumbled away, vowing never to return, but the echoes of that night would forever haunt my dreams. The Haunted House on the Hill, a place where the past and present converged in a dance of spectral despair, served as a chilling reminder that some secrets are best left undisturbed. 